Well, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since I actually made a turning video, uh, but you may have noticed I changed the name. We are now Brad's Wood Turning. Kind of combines the brands with the Brad's Workbench, my main channel, but that's neither here nor there. What we got today is my YouTube cross channel challenge for January, and it's a fire challenge. some of these pieces of cedar and I plan on casting them in this little Clorox wipes tub with some total boat thick set and I have not really used this before so what we're gonna do it's a hundred to 28 thanks to mr. Doug for setting me straight because I was just gonna go three to one and those with the keen eye will notice that I almost severely screwed up that's what we're gonna use and not the slow cure stuff make sure my cup is clean $4.99. Uh, $4.99. Oh, $500. 502, you son of a. I need to add 140 grams to this mixture to get my three to one. So let's hit 640. Well, this stuff is really like water. 643. I'm going to call that good enough. The one thing about the, the, the very slow cure epoxies is you don't get very good color separation because, for one, I'm not patient enough to wait. You know two or three hours for this stuff to start kicking and then makes my colors but i do like the fact like with my rock bowl that it you do get some color separation but there's also a lot of blending and i like that personally i think it's kind of a cool effect in its own right mm. So, I mixed up a little coppery red because I wanted a better transition. We're going to move over to the pressure pot because we're getting close to the top. And when this thing is full, I don't want to touch it. I just want to seal it and put it under pressure. Let's put some air in there. It's been... Man, I think four or five days. Get her loosened up and see what's inside. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'll be honest with you. I've been pretty excited. And I'll also be honest with you, I still don't know exactly what I'm going to make of this. Sure. Good Lord. I am actually really shocked how much resin it sucked in. Hold on. Oh, be careful. You should always cut away. Oh, oh you scared me with that knife. Why am I scaring you with my knife? You know? It's not going to come through and cut you. Hey, Scotty, grab some plastic. It's good. That ain't fire. I don't know what is. Uh-oh. Yostin? Yostin, we have a problem. We got a void. We got a pretty good void. And it goes all the way back into here. There's no sense in me showing you how I'm going to do this. I'm literally going to tape this. Tape a circle around here just to be sure. And then pour some epoxy in there and let it drip down in there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. A few days later... We got that void right there, taken care of, filled in. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. I like all the swirls in it. I like what we got going on here. So I'm still not sure if this is going to be a box or like a small vase. Now it's already like 11 o'clock at night, so I'm just going to try to true this up a little bit. It's got a slight wobble to it. It shouldn't be too awful bad. And, uh, and then probably sleep on it, and we'll see what we got after that. So I'm going to get you out of my way, and I'm going to turn this, and, and I guess you can watch. Good God. I didn't want to stop though because I had such a good pass going. Let's look at this thing. I think we're done for the night. Might put some tenons on it. I always gotta do I always gotta do one more thing, right? Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tenon down here and a tenon down here because I, I really think I'm probably most likely gonna do a box. I've never done a resin box, I've only done one wood box. So it will be a challenge. Mm -hmm. 
See, we got our tenon there, and well, you'll just have to trust me, we got a tenon on this side too. I think she looks good. I'm excited to continue tomorrow, and uh, yeah, see where it takes us. So I've got it over here at the bandsaw because of the grain and the swirls of the resin to line up better when the box is together. And then we're going to turn it today. Try not to screw it up. Just going to sharpen up this portion a bit, run it in there. Well, you'll see. You'll see as I go. Which, by the way, for those of y'all that don't know how to sharpen a portion a bit, this little diamond file set, I'll link it in the description, cost me $10. Man, I sharpened Forstner bits, router bits, I've had them for almost a year now, and they're still going strong. All right, let's drill a hole. So really, <laughs> I can't remember the process, which is a very bad thing in wood turning because it's a deductive art form it's all about the steps you take and how you take them but i'm gonna go ahead and face this off uh, then i'm gonna have a pretty wide we'll call it a ledge here because whenever i get my top done i do still want to come do some shaping with the top and bottom combines and uh pretty much make up the rest as i go all right let's get it I know you're going to say, why are you so far back? Well, to do the edge, you can't get past this line or else it'll turn on you. So I got to at least stay above that line. It's a little thinner than I wanted it, but there's not much I can do about it now. So I'm going to sand it and hope for the best. We'll fit the top. Okay. All right, so we're probably around 400, 320, somewhere in there on the inside. I'm going to next use my homemade, 100% food safe, all natural sanding paste. This is an extra fine. And I sell this on Etsy along with my tongue wax finish. Now, there's nothing else on the market like this. I got tired of seeing people make polishes using mineral oil, which is an oil that never cures. So I decided to make my own. I use 100% pure tongue oil. Yes, it's pure. I've checked the MSDS, all that good stuff. Organic white beeswax and carnauba wax. And there is a butt ton of carnauba wax in this. But this can be applied as a friction polish or it can just be rubbed on and buffed off. So if either of these interest you, link in the description to my Etsy store. Feel free, message me any questions. It's an extra fine, whereas other people are a little bit more coarse. And I make my paste a little bit thicker than most. I think it suspends the abrasive a little bit better. But I start out just rubbing it in there by hand. And of course, I'm not used to doing it in such close quarters. All right, let me get it in that bottom. Oh, ah, yeah, ah, yeah. <laughs> my wife's really like, what the hell is he doing out there? All right, so I'm going to cover up my paste. I'm going to open this back up because I want this area of the rag. And literally, because I want some padding on this, I'm just going to stick another paper towel inside. And just kind of make a ball I can shove in there. Now, since my paste is a little thicker, you better be holding on to your rack, because it's going to grab it when you first start. See, it's so smooth on the inside now, I really don't even have to hold it. I'm not gripping it, I'm just pressing it. Just about there. Damn! And sanded to 400, and then the uh, sanding paste. That's the only thing I've done. All right, so we got the top on. As you can see, I hollowed out just a little bit. But I gotta face it off, and then we'll start playing with fitment. Yeah, let's do that. This is only my second box, so if y'all see something I'm doing that could be done easier or the wrong way, please leave a comment. 
I'm definitely, this is definitely not a how to make a box video. This is Brad makes a box and probably screws it up at the end. All right, so I got this to where it's barely, barely not fit. And I think after we do our sanding, it'll be a perfect fit. I'm just gonna hollow this out a little bit and a little dome, not much. I don't want a huge lid and I don't have a whole lot of room if I decide to put a handle on. So I really don't know what, all I know right now is I'm going to hollow this out a little bit and then, and then we'll see where we go. Oh, yeah. I can tell it's getting close to midnight. So I'm just going to sand this real quick. Then we'll get the bottom on the lathe, attach the two. And start playing with the outside here. I don't think y'all really need to watch me sand the inside, do you? I'll bring you back after the sanding one. All right, guys. So, uh, good news, bad news. The insides are polished and they look amazing. Bad news is we got a pretty loose fit. Uh, yeah. So uh, my fitment sucks. <sighs> Story of my life, right? Hey, hey, oh, that's what she said. <sighs> Sorry, I'm in. I'm in a very very weird mood so we're just gonna finish this thing oh man i know i've been kind of editing this video a little bit as i go and i'm gonna either have to severely edit it down or i don't know it's it's a long video so far i, I just talk too much that's what it is i talk too much Let's sand. She's done! Let's take a look at her! <laughs> well, there she is, guys. I hope you didn't mind my little Duke of Heritage impression. Good guy, good channel. I always like to give him a hard time. But there she is, the little fire pot that could walk over, I guess. Let me zoom you in here for my favorite part of this whole thing, and that is this little bit of yellow at the top of the knob that I made. I am so pleased that that stayed in there. It just, I mean, I really think it makes the whole piece pretty much. And as far as the finish goes, all I did was hit it with the sanding paste, a coat of shellac to seal the wood, and then I didn't use it as a friction polish, but I used my tongue wax off of the lathe. I just wiped it on, let it sit for two days, you know, reapplying it where it dried up, and then buffed it off by hand with some paper towels came out excellent first time for me to use it that way on a hybrid piece for this being my second box and for me making as many mistakes in my order of operations as i think i did i'm very pleased with how it came out a little bit of a simple shape but overall i love it the fitment is a little loose Ooh, piece of candy but overall i'm very happy with it. like i said i love the yellow and the lid the inside of the lid looks pretty cool too the colors definitely i think fall in line with the fire theme and i also think that the top lines up fairly well. I was able to holler at Total Boat during this project and they were kind enough to share a discount code and of course all of that information is going to be in the description below along with any of the tools I used or recommended during this project. So this is my submission for the January Fire Challenge for the YouTube Cross Channel Challenge. Turner's Dubois kind of got this all together invited me into the loop. Bunch of cool channels. I think they're up to like 25 now channels 
doing this and it'll be all year long every month a new theme a new challenge of some sort again go in the description all the pertinent information is in there that you need to know and honestly if you're still listening to me ramble this far into the end of the video you must like something about it so please go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit the bell all notification thing you know the thing that all channels tell you to do do that <laughs> and uh we'll hit some glamour shots at the end and i'll see y'all on the next one peace